Hi everyone and good morning. I welcome us back from ASU strike, our long vacation, which is caused as a result of the ASU strike and government negligence to the need of the university. So I know we have done this class before, but this is a kind of revision to help us prepare for the exam. It's a pity that we may not be seen again because I have other courses which I have not actually started. So I tend to use this um, period to teach those courses. So um, I'll just do a quick revision from our previous class. Remember I told us I'll be handling the phylum, Nidarian. Okay? So uh, for those that attended my last class, this, this will be in form of a revision to them. So. I told us that the phylum Nidarian is an interesting group of more than 9,000 species and it includes some of the nature's strangest and loveliest creature. Okay, now when you talk about their morphology, they can be branch like, plant like, and flower like. Okay, now although uh, members of this um, Phylum, that's the Nidaria, are more highly organized than sponges. They are still relatively simple animals. And then it's important to note that most of them are sexi. That means they do not move around. Most of them are sexi. Although we have ones that are that move about, like the jellyfish, okay? But it's just feeble swimming. Now, because of the, the nature of this uh, phylum Nidaria, because of the fact that many of them stick to one place, they do not move about. Of course, it's very important to note that the Darians are marine dwellers. Only a few are found in fresh water, but majority are found in marine waters. And then there is no terrestrial Nidarian, so none can be found on land. It's very important to know that. Of course, you know that this um, ZU 201 is a subjective uh, exam. So you have to read, uh, read in between lines to be able to uh, decipher what your answer will be, okay? So, having said that, it's very important to know that because of the way these uh, animals live their life, they are situated at a place and those that have the ability to move around only move feeble. Okay, one may have the impression that this animal is a weak animal, okay, because they do not move around in search of their food, in search of their prey, they stay at one place. But no, that's not the case. This animal has the ability to even trap and kill the most sophisticated and intelligent animals. And they do this because they have a weapon called the nematocytes. Now this nematocyte is being housed by the nidocytes, okay? By the nidocytes. You will still see the spelling downwards as we move uh, down, okay? Now when a small animal lucky enough to brush against one of these tentacles is suddenly spared with hundred or even thousands of nematocytes and quickly immobilize them. So the work of these uh, nematocytes is to paralyze its prey so that they can be able to trap it, okay? So um, the nematocyte is a fearsome but wondrous tiny weapon. So in exam, in exam, if I ask us, dash is a fearsome but wondrous tiny weapon. Of course, you know the answer is what? Nematocytes. So it's going to be simple. You don't need to um, think too hard. So far, you read your book. Uh, of course, you 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 have an A in my in my in my part. So the phylum Nidarians take its name from the cells called the nidocytes. I told us about this nidocyte. This nidocyte houses the organelles, and these organelles are called the nidia. Of course, the C is silent when pronouncing it, but remember to write it in your book during the exam. Now, the most common type of nidia is the nematocyte, which I told you that is used for stinging its prey, to paralyze its prey, okay? 
Now, Nidarians are an ancient group with the longest fossil history of any metazoan, reaching back more than 700 million years ago. I don't want to go into that part much, but um, it's important to know that, um, that Nidarians sometimes live symbiotically with other animals, often as a commensals, and they do this by living on the shells or other surfaces of their host okay we just have to read these parts and digest it okay then we'll talk about the economic importance of these nidarians of course they have economic importance some are used like the corals they are used in building some are used in making a uh, ornament and jewelry and so on so know the economic importance of these nidarians then we talk about the classes of Nidarian. There are actually four classes of Nidarian that are officially recognized, although another one has been added, making it five. So in exam, if I say list four classes of Nidarian, just list one to four. But if I say list five, list one to five. Okay. So the first one is the Hydrozoa. The second one is the Skyphozoa. The third is the Kubozoa. The Anthozoa. And the fifth is the Starozoa. When you talk about the hydrozoa, the majority of the hydrozoa are marine and colonial in form, and a typical life cycle includes both an accessual polyp and a sexual medusa stage. Okay, so um, talk about the example of the class hydrozoa. Example is the hydra, the obelia, the physelia, and the tubelaria. We go to the class Cyphozoa. This include the larger jellyfish or cup animals, and these do not have um, a polyp stage, which is the asexual stage, unlike in class Hydrozoa, but they have the Medusa stage, which is the sexual stage. Okay, so um, talk about the example of this class Cyphozoa. Have the um, Cyania capillata the aurelia and the rhizostoma so it's, it's important you know the spellings okay talk about the class the starozoa they are mainly solitary with the presence of only polyp so this one automatically perform a sexual types of type of reproduction because they are only polyp medusa form is normally absent talk about the example this is the class kubozoa the Kubozoa, um, once we are considered an other Kubo Medusa of a Skyphozoa. The, me the Medusoid is the predominant form, and the Polypoid is inconspicuous, and in most cases unknown. So, mainly the class Kubozoa exhibits um, the Medusa form of a a reproduction that's it because medusa they mainly have medusa medusa is the sexual uh, reproduction um, type okay talk about the class anthozoa the class anthozoa um they are made up of all polyp okay no medusa so they perform a sexual reproduction and then they have uh, three subclasses so in exam if i say Mention the three subclasses of anthozoa. Just tell, just give me Heza Corellia, the Seri, the Seri Antipatheria, and the Octo Corellia. Okay, so we talk about the form and the functions. We have the di dimorphism and polymorphism in Nidarians. Di means two, and poly means three and up. Okay, then dimorphism, the dimorphism of Nidarians in Nidaria. Could either be a polyp or a medusa. The polyp can also be called the hydroid form, while a medusa is also called the jellyfish eh, form. So, in exam, if I said um, another name for polyp dimorphism is dash, just give me hydroid form. Another name for medusa dimorphism is what? Jellyfish form. So, this polyp is adapted to a sedentary or sexile life they do not move about they are stuck in one place so if i said the nature of nidarian that are adapted to sexile life is dash 
the polyp or the hydroid form is the answer okay same applies to the medusa form superficially the polyp and the medusa may seem very different but actually each has retained the sac like body plane characteristics of the phylum so um just um, read up this part the polyp or the hydroid form is important to note that the polyp may reproduce asexually by bonding fission or pedal laceration laceration simply means um tearing okay pedal tearing so polyp perform asexual reproduction either by bonding by fusion or by pedal laceration when you talk about the medusa or the jellyfish form they perform sexual reproduction by exchange of uh, gametes okay so um talk about the characteristics of the phylum nidaria i don't want to spend much time because i don't want this video to be long so characteristics of the phylum nidaria one is that the nidocytes present of the nidocytes okay so of course i told you what nidocyte is nidocyte houses the stinging organelle called the nematocyte so present of the nidocytes is one of the characteristics of the phylum nidaria then the third is the they are entirely aquatic some are in fresh water but most are marine remember there's no terrestrial uh, nidaria okay the third is they are radial symmetry or biradial symmetry for two types of individual the polyp and the medusa talk about the adult body they are diploblastic diploblastic deep means two so they have two type of body uh, layer the epidemics and the gastrodemics which is right from the epidemics and what's endodemics then they have the presence of the mesongle mesongle is what replaced the mesoderm in their own case okay talk about the incomplete gut called the vas uh, the gastrovascular gravity so presence of a gastrovascular gravity think about the extracellular digestion so in exam i can ask us uh, the phylum nidarian is bit dash and dash type of digestion so i i want to uh, see extracellular digestion and intracellular digestion or i can also twist the question by asking the extracellular digestion and intracellular digestion of the phylum nidaria occurs in dash and dash so it's important to know that the extracellular digestion occurs in the gastrovascular cavity. Let me read. Extracellular digestion occurs in gastrovascular cavity. Why the intracellular digestion occurs in gastroderma? Occurs in gastroderma cells. Occurs in gastroderma cells. Extensible tentacles, usually in cycle mouth or oral region. Talk about the muscular contractions via epithelial muscular cells epithelial muscular cells okay talk about the sense organ they have um uh the sense organ called the statocytes which is an organ of uh, balancing so in as if i say dash is the organ of balancing in the phylum nidaria just write statocytes then they have also the ocelli which is an organ for photosensitivity ocelli they talk about the presence of the nerve nets with symmetrical and asymmetrical synapses. Talk about the exhibition of accessual reproduction by bonding in polyps form. And you talk about also the sexual reproduction by gametin or medusa. So don't just tell me uh, sexual reproduction by gametes. Tell me which dimorphism does uh, exhibit that sexual reproduction. Just like I wrote it there sexual reproduction by gamete in all medusa and a sexual reproduction by bonding in polyps okay then it is also important to know that there is no excretory or respiratory system and no slumic cavity so when you talk about the life cycle of nidarian of course we already know that they have two dimorphism the polyp and the medusa now in this life cycle the egg forms into a larva and the larva forms into a polyp which is the asexual form now this asexual form give rise to other nidarian by means of a asexual reproduction 
but sometimes this polyp when they um, uh, um reproduce by a means of bonding they usually give rise to medusa and this medusa of course you know exchange of gametes is how they is their type of reproduction so we talk about the body war of the nidarian we have talked about the epidemies and the gastrodemies and the the inner layer which they have which is called the mesoglea so if i, I said list the three type of the body layer of uh, the class nidaria just write epidemics uh, um, uh, gastrodemics and the uh, mesoglea right so we talk about the needle sites i told us that the needle sites is what houses the stinging cell called the nematocytes so here we talk about how this um movement comes to be i don't want to bore us with a um, lot of videos so that we don't get tired listening to it we talk about the feeding and the digestion of course i told us earlier that they have two method of uh, uh, digestion have the extracellular and the intracellular so it's very important you note where each occur then you talk about the nerve nets so i think this is uh, the end of the of the lecture I'll be seeing us in example. I wish us all the best. Please read your book. It's very important. Okay. Thank you for watching.